Hey, how's it going, everyone at uh, Yan Fung Automotive Interiors? Um, to anyone that's uh, watching this video, I do apologize um, for the de delay on me sending this and answering these questions. Um, I was uh, had a little bug I was trying to shake off, and I didn't want to sound kind of sick when I was in the microphone. But um, I'm excited for this opportunity, um, the next stage of the application process. And I guess I'll just get started right away. Um, once again, my name is Ethan Larson. I am a business major at Hope College, um, Zhongwen minor, Chinese. Um, so I think that's really cool that I'm being able to apply to a company that kind of origins in China, but is local in Holland, Michigan, like a small, right, really connected with Hope College, which is really cool. Um, so I'll just get started. Uh, first question is, when you were a kid, did you... Who, who did you want to be when you grew up? So I've always really looked up to my um, grandfather, I'd say. Um, he was a missionary for 50 years, um, anthropologist in the West Papua Islands in Papua New Guinea. Um, and the things he did with his life, he was a really well-educated man, got his um, PhD in anthropology, it was in University of Michigan. And he could have done a lot of things with that, but he chose to follow his passion um, for Christ. He's a really strong Christian and pursued um, to be a missionary. And what he did with that is he um, went to a nomadic tribe and was able to interact with these people, like get, get their acceptance, I'd say. Um, they're called uh, the Donis and the Alaga tribe. Um, and through that, he was able to learn the language that they spoke gained their trust, and then was able to convert them to Christianity because they used to believe in um, kind of witchcraft before then. And he was able to translate the entire Bible in their language, wrote a written language for them first, and then translate the entire Bible in their written language. And I actually had one key kind of cool thing. I was able to go visit um, that tribe when I was a sophomore in high school. And it was crazy um, just how appreciative they were. Um, so that was a guy, my grandfather, he's still alive, thankfully, but like someone I've always uh, looked up to, um, he's always thinking of others first before himself. Um, and I try to like shape myself after him. Um, question two, give an example of when you had to work with someone who was difficult to get along with. Um, so there was, I think my junior year of high school, I got a job, um, at this tech office, tech office um, at my public school. So it was, um, we would just um, kind of stock iPads all day, but when things got slow, we'd work with their maintenance team. Um, and they had two summer workers who were high school kids as well, a couple years younger than me. Um, and it got to a point where they were really slacking and um, I was like alongside with them. And it just kind of really bugged me. Um, I think I kind of built up all that tension um, the first couple of days when I was working with them because they were like really not utilizing themselves in an efficient, effective way. Um, they would try to find any opportunity to relax. And from what I was working on before, like the culture is way different than that um, with the iPads. Like we were always constantly working. So I, uh, I definitely like kind of cold shouldered them at first. And then I kind of just, when I went home a couple of days after that, I was just kind of readjusting and how, how do I handle these, these for, this is the follow up for that question is how do I handle these interactions with them? These coworkers, I kind of just um, chose not to kind of be mean to them and just kind of did my own work and was just really quiet and actually kind of like works like way more intensely whenever they would rest, just intentionally, I would work way a lot harder and just not say anything. And um, it rubbed off a little bit. It wasn't really too effective, but that's just how I handled a tough situation. That was probably one of the most irritating things I had to, to deal with with work. Um, Cause I would kind of did most of the, it was mostly like heavy lifting. Um, but yeah, that was, that was one uh, difficult situation with a coworker. Um, what are three things that are most important to you in a job? So three things I think are teamwork, consistency and um having a mentor or like some sort of support um for teamwork yeah i can um do self-starter task um but i feel like personally i'm more effective 
when I'm able to collaborate with others and um, having different individuals with their own skills bringing to the table, um, just having that synergy um, with everyone collaborating and working together, I think is um, the, w the, the kind of, what should I say, um, way I, I work best. Um, I can do uh, my own tasks, but like I, te I te definitely um, kind of can get in a slump sometimes um, or kind of I think I feed off of other people, let's say. Um, consistency, I think that's really important, um, whether it be like the first day of a job or like the 50th day of the job doing the same thing over and over again. Um, for one example, I kind of learned this. I like this is the same job. It has iPads. It was a really boring job. Um, it was a high school job, and every year the freshmen would get like a set of 2,000, 3,000 iPads for all the four high schools. They'd ship out to all high schools. And I had the job of like creating every single individual Apple Apple ID, all the all the Apple accounts for all the, like their emails, downloading every specific app um, they they needed to have. And at first, I was just like, I can't do this. Like I I just I'm so bored of my mind. Like I'm standing all day, like eight hours a day, just doing the same thing. But um, what that kind of like taught me at a young young age for like employment is just being consistent, be showing up on time. Um, and like just continuing putting the effort even when things you might really not like to do or can be repetitive. Um, the last thing is having a mentor or support. And I think this is a big deal um, for all um, kind of college kids my age, um, entering the workforce especially. A lot of us um, really unfamiliar with what things are going on and we really have to go out of our comfort zone, um, which is something I really um, have been practicing on and trying to figure out how to do. Like, like yeah, something I don't want to do, um, but it's gonna like it only can help me. It can't hurt me. Um, I believe in making mistakes; like only make you better. Um, so getting out of my comfort zone and through that, a mentor or support is key for kind of growing yourself as a person and as a worker. Um, question number four: Give an example of an occasion when you use logic to solve a problem. So I recently had a uh, case analysis in my operations management class. I guess I just thought of this one because it was really close. Um, all right, it was really recent. Yeah, so we, the main task was they had a, it was an Earth Buddy case. So they're, Earth Buddies are this, this um, plant toy, that was a hit um, item, like 2003. And what it is, is like, it was a face and like, there was grass and seeds, um, dirt that would, like you'd add water in and put in a pot and like, the face, the hair, like the hair was grass in a sense and like you could grow the grass out. So that's like what the toy was. And it's a startup company and the product, product director needed to expand quickly yet remain flexible with little inventory in the small startup firm. So in this process, um, they had stages of like filling buckets. This is the operation stage. Um, and the issue was they couldn't, they couldn't really speed up. They're trying to figure out how, how they can speed up on production because they could get an order of a hundred thousand units. Um, but if that order doesn't come, they also need to be able to ha have it in the inventory ready to go in case someone else had it. And like they couldn't speed that process up as it was growing. So like they had all these different, I think six different stages of operations, producing the product, manufacturing it, um, like filling it. Um, another example is like molding the faces together, putting the eyes on, shaping the ears and nose, and, like painting the mouth. Um, the one stage though that was like the longest was after they painted the mouth before they package it and be ready to be shipped. They had it await seven hours for. Um, the paint on the lips of the pots to dry. And I kind of, uh, when in class, this is actually like two days ago, I want to say, we, uh, we talked about this case and all of our al alternative solutions. And I kind of had an unorthodox uh, <laughs> way of approaching the solution, which I kind of, it, I use logic in a sense. If I was saying, if, if everyone was trying to think of ways they can maximize the workers, I was just had an idea, I was pretty unorthodox. I was like, okay, what if we just uh, invested in some hair dryers and just use hair dryers to speed up the drying process? Because that was the biggest thing that was holding the back in production. Um, and I was kind of nervous uh, presenting that <laughs> idea to the class, but it turned out to be a pretty logical, like just dry, that's the speeding up the drying process and like effective way to solve that problem. Um, yeah, it took me a while to get there. But uh, number five, why do customers buy a product? Um, so customers buy a product for um, three three main reasons, I think quality, 
cost on the market, um, and then service provided. So the quality, like whether or not your item or what you can provide can be effective for what they want to do in their business or in their task to be successful. Like what, what can you offer us that's to some sort of advantage or quality or benefit to them in the overall scheme of things of what they want to do. Um, cost in the market, so this is also, they'll go to other people or you, basically just based on the economy at the time, the market, and alongside competitors, what can you give them in a cheaper, more um, effective, but yet cheap product compared to the other people, um, other business or firms that provide. And then third would be um, customer int intimacy or customer service, like how well do you build a relationship with your customers, like how well can you be there alongside them and how well they, they can depend on you to give them your product? Um, yes, so that is um, the answer to those questions. I know I'm a little over time, I just noticed. Um, I do apologize for that, but I look forward to hearing you guys again. Um, and once again, I do apologize for the delay for me sending this. But have a good day. Nah, thank you.